which uh, nodes and which edge should be turned on. So first we will uh, we will uh, create uh, the edge cre we will handle the edge creation phase. And to do this, you have to think of what you are doing when you are when you are interacting. Here it's simple because you already uh, have the the thing done. Uh, it's a little bit harder to in, to visualize visualize it when you when you don't have uh, this. So first, you have to write down. I have my, a whiteboard. I used uh, paper before and always writing down uh, things that start to be too complex to stay in my head so here what you have to write down is this, the step of the interaction first you have to click on a node then if you hold the um, uh, there's a bit uh, there's a, a bug I didn't notice anyway when you hold the the edge will follow your mouse and when you close to a doubt it will snap so you have a while you are ho while you are holding the mouse uh, you have two possible uh, effects following the mouse or snapping to the nearest uh, node then when you release the mouse the edge stay. If you release the mouse when the edge isn't on a node, it disappears. <coughs> That's the basic of uh, the edge creation. And then if you right click on an edge, it is destroyed, which is uh, rather simple. So, <coughs> what do we need to do first? It's clicking. So we need the mouse uh, plugin. We need to click on a node. So you have left click uh, on click no on object clicked left click on node okay when you left click on a node you want to create an edge I didn't rename it yet I will rename it edge we will create an edge on the node position. Okay, so uh, let's see what it does. It's here. I click, it creates an edge. It's working. Now, you want to. There's something uh, we didn't talk yet. Uh, this edge is following my mouse. I release it. And this edge now is following my mouse, but this edge here isn't following my mouse anymore. So there's something telling C2 that an edge should follow the mouse and another shouldn't. That's an information uh, C2 have to figure out at some point. To do this, you need to... Um, what uh, okay? What is the rule? The, the rule here. What makes? What is the difference between uh, an edge that follows the mouse and then an, an edge that doesn't? And the edge that follows the mouse is the newly created one. That's the important thing. So you want the information. You want to know if an edge is new or not. So it's a property of an edge and I will create new and it's a boolean when you create a new edge you will set this boolean to new true now what you can do now you know which edge is new and we'll see we will be able to know which edge isn't new so if an edge is new you will follow the mouse that's the rule so the edge new <coughs> new 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 boolean new so what is following the mouse 
following the mouse is I will turn to toward the mouse and I will extend to reach the mouse. So you have to change two property of your edge. The first one is the rotation. Hopefully you have a, s a nice little uh, action for that. Set angle toward position. So you set angle toward mouse dot x and mouse dot y. Then, so what happens? Let's see. Here, it follows the angle properly but not the size. And if I release, uh, it's still uh, there. So, uh, here I want to change the edge width. It's the, since we have the origin to the left of our sprite, it's the horizontal length we want to change, so it's the width. Uh, the width, we saw this one uh, long ago not long ago actually to distance we will calculate the distance between the node which is actually the position the position of the edge itself and the mouse so to get the position of the edge you can do self since you are in an object expression self x self y and then mouse x and mouse y. Then you have this nice effect of following the mouse. For now we won't handle the snapping, it will come, don't worry, we will just want that when you release the, the button, the left button, the hedge is released. Let's uh, put it that way for now. You release the button, left. The edge is released. Uh, so you just have to set the new to false. Uh, I release, it doesn't follow. It creates a new one, a new one, a new one, a new one. Okay, and if I click not on a node, it doesn't create any edge. It's cool to, uh, it's good to, uh, to know that, to test that. I mean, uh, okay. I will create the simple one, which is the the description. So here, it's uh, creation. I forgot to take it underneath the group, so it's uh, nicely collapsible. Uh, I will change the name uh, edge uh, handling it's because I will have the creation here and the destruction no. here like that destruction the rule for the destruction I have hard time saying rule rule the rule for the destruction is you right click on the object so it's an object click but you select right here and right click on edge destroy the edge destroy destroy okay so here you have already some good example of picking you pick here you pick with this uh, condition you pick uh, you don't pick with these ones here, all edge will uh, be affected by this, but it's not a problem. When you release the button, you don't want any edge to be new. And then, when you click on a right click on an edge, you pick it and you only destroy this edge. Let's test that. I create some edges and I right click on them, destroy. I will also, since there's this edge, this remaining edge here which should be destroyed, I will destroy this on start of layout. Okay. Uh, we will... Let's see. <laughs> okay. To continue 
uh, on this uh, KPX, I have to think about how we'll compute the connection. My first uh, solution was to um, just uh, check uh, overlapping. If uh, this thing overlap this thing and then this thing overlap this thing, it quickly became complicated first, first thing, and second thing, uh, it uh, creates a problem where you are in this situation where you have a node on the other side and you cross two nodes with one with one edge. So uh, I decided to not use overlapping at all for this uh, for this uh, mechanism. I my solution is to store in the edge itself which node it, it is connecting. So to store this information, I will use instance variables. So I will create uh, from UID and to UID. This to uh, since uh, we won't really worry about uh, the sense, the uh, d direction of uh, the flow of our uh, on and off state, these actually carry the same meaning. There, there's no real uh, from and to. They all are uh, each end of uh, the, um, the connection. For now, I use from and to because it, uh, it talks to me. Uh, it says to me it's uh, it's uh, it's an edge. This thing is an edge. Uh, I could have said uh, point A, point B, uh, something like that. But uh, for now, uh, let's uh, just uh, say it's okay like that. Okay, so what you want to do in this situation is first be careful about the starting values of your from and to UID. The val valid uh, range of UID in your, uh, in your object are from 0 to uh, any number. It's a positive number stra starting from 0. So 0 is actually a valid value. So it shouldn't be a default value in your uh, edges. So I will set it to minus one. And actually, I will create a constant. I will call it unset, and we'll set it to minus one. So we can use unset instead of using minus one as an unset value. OK, so first thing you want to do is when you click on uh, the object, you know that the edge from value will be this node. So you already set it here. From UID will be the node UID here. OK, so while you are dragging, you will start to um, have two situations. The first one is I am not close to a node, so I follow these rules. And the second is I am close to a node, so I will stick to the node itself. So I will have the same expression, but instead of mouse x, mouse y here, I will have node x, node y. First, what is, uh, we will set a value like this. Uh, we will we'll say snap radius. We will set it to 50, 50 pixels. So now, when the edge is new, it's uh, the, the edge following the cursor, you have to filter two situation i am close or I, or I am not close to do this we'll use a